Welcome everyone. Let's begin today's yin yoga class starting in child's pose. Bringing the big toes to touch, knees come apart, maybe shoulder width distance or a little bit wider towards the edge of your mat. And from here you can slowly start to walk your palms forward, dropping your chest and head down onto the mat. Know that at any point in time you can always use a few props to bring the ground closer towards you. So if you find that your head is hovering off of the mat, you can always place a block under your forehead. Or you can even place a block in between your ankles before resting your hips. Once you've found a comfortable shape in child's pose, Focus on first deepening your breath. As your tailbone starts to sink down towards your heels, send your breath all the way down into your lower belly, lower back, hips. Allow your heart to melt in between your shoulders. Neck is relaxed. Belly is soft. Feel your hips start to release here, areas of the body that might be particularly tight from running. If you ever feel any discomfort in your lower back, simply bring your knees a little bit closer together and connect back to your breath, flowing freely in and out through the nose. Press your palms into the mat as you slowly lift your head and chest off of the ground. Palms underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips, and step your right foot forward all the way along the right edge of your mat, setting up for lizard pose. And here you can choose to fold up your mat so you can pad your left knee as we will be here for a few minutes. Stay up high on your palms so you can explore the pose by coming down onto your forearms. Try not to let your right knee go past your right ankle. And here you can really let your hips sink down low. For this first variation, we'll keep our right knee hugging in towards our right bicep. You can choose to keep your head up high if that's more comfortable for your neck, or you can go ahead and release your head down, letting your head be heavy, neck is relaxed, shoulders are still rolling down away from your ears. And you're not too worried about maintaining a flat back here, but you do not want to have any contraction or collapsing through the front body so still feel as if you could pull your heart forward still maintaining length from the crown of your head all the way down to your tailbone Flex your right heel and slowly start to drop your right knee towards the mat, 
externally rotating your right hip. And it is very important to keep your right foot flexed here as you want to keep all of your joints aligned. If this pose causes any discomfort in your knee, come back to the first variation with, by keeping your foot flat on the mat. This dropped down knee variation should help you get a little bit deeper into your glutes, piriformis, and deep hip muscles. Connect back to your breath. And let's bring our palms back down onto the mat. Bring your right knee in, right foot back in, and we'll slowly start to switch sides. So bring your right knee back. So you're back into your tabletop pose. And this time we'll step our left foot forward beside your left pinky. Sink your heels down low, maybe patting your right knee down this time and coming into the first variation of lizard pose so keep your left knee hugging in towards your left arm and you can stay up on your palms or you're welcome to bend your elbows coming down onto your forearms keep the back of the neck long or simply drop your head down towards the ground getting a little bit of a neck release Pay attention here to what your arms are doing, so they're there to help support you and stabilize you, but they should not be pushing you out of the pose. So notice that fine line between stability and resistance. Can you soften your upper body a little bit more? And then let's explore the second variation of lizard this time flexing your left foot and starting to drop your left knee down onto the ground. Left hip externally rotates and then proceed with melting your heart forward. Take five more breaths. Bring your left knee back in, left foot back down onto the mat. Slowly come back onto your palms, into your tabletop pose, unraveling your mat. 
And then from here we'll come into pigeon pose. So bring your right knee behind your right wrist, lengthening your left leg out behind you. Keep both hips even here so you're not rolling on one side more than the other. And slowly start to fold over your right leg. And again, this is a great place to use your props. If the floor is a little bit too far away today, you can place a block under your chest, under your forehead, or even under your right hip if you feel that it's a little bit too high off of the mat. And these deep hip openers can stir up a lot of emotions, so see if you can stay cool, calm, and collected by staying connected to your breath. Deep inhales, long exhales. Come to a place of surrender in this pose, relaxing any muscle that does not need to be working. Muscles like your jaw, your neck, your shoulders, softening through the upper back, into the hips, all the way down to your toes. Slowly bring your palms back down onto the mat, peeling head and chest off of the ground, curl your back toes under, and slowly come back into your tabletop pose. Move slowly here, you might need to reach your right toes back, stretching out your hip, maybe doing a few hip circles before we go into the second side. So this time your left knee will go behind your left wrist and it'll extend your right leg back. Take your time as you start to melt your chest down onto the ground. And you can support your head by maybe stacking your fists, placing a block, or just going right down onto the ground. And although we've already done this pose with our right leg, the second side might be a completely brand new experience. So move slowly and adjust if you need to. Don't try to make this side exactly like the first one. And resist the urge to label one side as the good side, one side as the bad side. And simply let them be what they are.
Let's take about another minute here. Letting the hips sink down a little bit lower. And use your breath to release your left hip. Visualize your muscles softening, relaxing. Slowly bring your palms back in line with your shoulders, peel your chest off of the mat and come back into your tabletop pose, stretching out your left leg, feeling this brand new hip of yours. And really take your time here before coming into a seated pose, Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet come to touch, knees come apart, sit up high on both sits bones, shoulders are directly over top of your hips. And we'll move into a fold from here. So feel your spine lengthening first. And as you exhale, slowly start to fold down forward. And again, don't worry too much here about maintaining a flat back. You can let your back slowly start to round down, releasing your head, releasing your neck. Palms are outstretched in front of you. Shoulder blades roll down the back to maintain integrity in your neck. And let your hips soften here, dropping your knees down a little bit closer towards the ground. And since we are here for a few minutes, don't feel like you need to go to your full range of motion right away. Let yourself ease into it and gradually sink deeper and deeper. Feel your belly and ribs expand on the inhale here and gently contract on an exhale. Although we're mostly focusing on the hips and legs today, we still want to maintain a general awareness with the upper body. Slowly lift your head and chest off of the mat until your shoulders are back up in line with your hips. And just take three deep breaths here, maybe keeping the eyes closed. Use your palms to bring your knees back to center and we'll set up for a forward fold. So you might want to grab a bolster or some blocks here. Have your left leg out straight in front of you, bending your right knee, sole of your right foot comes in towards your left thigh. And we'll move into a fold, so make sure both sits bones are down onto the mat. And from here simply crawl your fingertips forward, dropping head and chest. 
either onto a block, a bolster, or you don't need any props at all. It can feel really nice to just let the head dangle. Resist the urge to push and pull here, so try not to hold on to your left foot or make yourself go deeper than you might be ready to go. Let gravity do most of the work for you. And feel yourself sinking deeper and deeper with every exhale. You might find that you're not going as far down as you would like to in this forward fold. And if that's the case, see if you can find a way to be okay with that. Yoga is all about accepting the present moment and surrendering to what is instead of always trying to push to get somewhere else. So if your head is not all the way down to your leg or all the way down to the floor today, don't worry about it. Can you appreciate the shape you're in right now? Slowly start to lift your head and chest off of the mat, and we'll take our time here, switching sides. So bend your left knee, stretching out your right leg this time. Sole of your left foot hugs in towards your right inner thigh. Stay grounded on both sits bones, not rolling on one side more than the other, and slowly start to fold forward. Remember that this side might be a completely new experience from the first side. So move slowly and mindfully. Over time, your chest will start to lower closer towards the ground. So don't try to get there right away. Slowly peel through the layers. Stretching out your lower back, deep into your hamstrings.
Keep reminding yourself to soften through the shoulders, through the upper back. Breath is flowing evenly in and out through the nose. Arms are simply resting to either side of your leg. And take five more deep breaths here. Start to walk your palms back towards your hips, gently lifting your head and chest. And move your props out of the way. We'll come to lay down on our belly, stretching out our quads from there. So as you make your way onto your belly, we'll start by placing our left forearm parallel to the short edge of our mat. And then you're going to see if you can grab your right ankle with your right hand. And if it doesn't quite make it there, you can always use a strap and wrap it around your ankle. Pulling your foot in closer towards your upper thigh. And really important here to keep grounding your pelvis down into the mat, lengthening your tailbone towards your heels. And you might find that you have a little bit of low back sensitivity here, especially because we just did a forward fold. So if that's the case, don't pull your foot in all of the way. Take your time to ease yourself into this pose here. And the more you try to reach and extend your right knee towards the bottom of your mat, the deeper you'll be able to feel the stretch into your quads. And see if you can keep head and shoulders relaxed down onto the mat here. using minimal strength, minimal effort. And let's switch sides. So bring your right forearm parallel to the short edge of your mat and reach back with your left hand, hooking on to your left ankle or left foot. And as always, you're lengthening your tailbone down towards the back of your mat, relaxing your upper body, sending your breath down your left upper thigh, And we're not here too, too long, so see if you can make these last few moments count. Slowly release your left foot back down onto the mat 
and take your time, we're just rolling over onto our backs here. Let's pull both knees in towards the chest, gently rocking from side to side, massaging the lower back. And you can stay in this first variation or you're welcome to come into Happy Baby by stacking your ankles over your knees and maybe grabbing onto your big toes with your two piece fingers or holding onto the outsides of your feet placing your elbows to the insides of your knees. Keep your tailbone down onto the mat as you do this. Head and shoulders are still relaxed. And if this pose does not work for you, just come back into the original pose, hugging your knees in towards your chest. You'll get the same benefits. If you're in your happy baby pose, gently pull down on your feet, bringing your knees closer towards the edges of your ribs, down towards the mat, connecting back to our hips and hamstrings, inner thighs. And you can always rock gently from side to side here as well. Take five more deep belly breaths here. Really feel your belly expand like a balloon. Ribs spread out from side to side, front to back. Deep, full breaths. All the way down into your hips, or wherever you feel the strongest sensations in these poses. Slowly start to release your ankles, hug your knees one last time, and we'll prepare for Shavasana, our final resting pose. So go ahead and straighten out your legs down onto your mat. Take up as much space with your arms as you're comfortable taking. Let the eyes close. The beautiful thing about Shavasana is that you're already a master yogi when it comes to this pose. There's no advanced version of Shavasana. All you have to do is lay back down, let go, and relax. I encourage you to stay here for a couple minutes, allowing your body to really integrate all the benefits of your practice. I thank you so much for joining me today and doing this class. Please take the time to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you'll do some more classes with me in the future. Thank you. Namaste.